Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This video is to help you work with your data for Lab 11B. So, along with this video, you probably ought to have a copy of the lab book um, or the lab steps, which I'll uh, scan and put on Google Classroom. We're going to be working through the portion of 11B over here that works with your data. So, if you haven't done the lab and you don't have data, then stop and go do the lab and get some data. Um, and then you'll need your, your lab write-up that goes along with it so we can fill out the table on the other side, okay? Um, I want to work you through part two, processing data, especially parts A, B, C, and D. And I did this video um, so that the, when we discuss it in class, you can come back to this and pause it and go at your own pace, okay? So in the lab manual, in the book right here, step A says uh, under processing data, Calculate the temperature change of water. Um, so you've got to look at your data, and we're taking a look at the initial temperature of the water. That should be in your table. And the final temperature of the mixture. That's how much it actually changed. So I'm going to share my data with you. The water started off at 22.6 degrees Celsius. And then after I put the hot metal cube into it, it ended up being 26.9 degrees Celsius. Your numbers are going to be different, but what they should not be is um, they shouldn't be really far apart from each other. Okay? So to figure out the change in temperature of the water for part A, we're going to take the final temperature, which is this one right here, minus the initial temperature, which is this one right here. Okay? So 26.9 degrees Celsius minus the 22.6 degrees Celsius to figure out how much that water heated up because of the metal. And in this case, that should have ended up, should have ended up being 4, what did I get, 4.3 degrees Celsius, okay? That's the change in temperature of the water. You should not get a huge change in temperature when you put the hot metal into the water, all right? Here's part B. It says calculate the temperature change of the metal. The metal started off really hot. So my initial temperature for the metal was the same temperature of the very hot water that it was sitting in for a couple of minutes. So for me, that was 70.7 degrees Celsius. Okay? Now, the tricky part about this is, what was the temperature of the metal at the end? Well, when it was put into the room temperature water or the cold water in the cup, they both ended up reaching the same temperature at the very end. That means that the temperature of the metal at the end is the same as the final temperature of mixture, whatever you have written down. The same 26.9 degrees that the water ended up being, that was the same temperature of the metal at the end as well. 26 uh, minus 26.9 degrees Celsius. That'll represent the change in temperature of the metal. Okay, so for that, I got a 43.8 degree temperature change, 43.8 degrees Celsius, all right? So this was for the metal, and this was the temperature change of the water. Notice that your number should also give you a smaller change in temperature for the water and a bigger change in temperature for the metal, all right? That's part A and part B. Part C says, calculate the heat gained by the water using the equation below. This is the first really kind of nasty equation that we've used in this class. This is an energy and specific heat equation. And it looks like this. The lab tells you what each part stands for, okay? It says that the energy, that's what the big E stands for, how much thermal energy is either going in or out, is equal to the mass of whatever material we're dealing with multiplied by... The specific heat, that's what CP stands for here, is specific heat. I know that seems strange, just go with me today. And then there's this strange thing in parentheses. Temperature 2 minus temperature 1. That's the temperature change that we calculated. That's what these numbers are. 4.3 is a temperature change. 43.8 is a temperature change. We got these by subtracting the final temperature from the initial temperature. Okay, so the question that asks us to use this equation says, um, focus in on the water. Figure out how much energy the water absorbed from the metal. So we're going to solve for E. Everything is set up how it's supposed to be. 
We just now have to um, solve by plugging in what we know. All right. So how much actual, sorry, how much actual water did we deal with? You've got to look at the mass of the water in the calorimeter. For some of you, you matched the mass of metal. For others, you used a mass of 150 for all of your cups. Okay, so just look at your data. Look at the mass of the water in the calorimeter. The energy is going to be equal to, in my case, I use 150 grams of water. Okay, I'm going to multiply that by the specific heat of water, and that's just given to us. They tell us in your lab book that that's 4.184. Okay. And now this last part, we've already done the calculation for. The final temperature of the water minus the initial temperature of the water. That's what this is right here, 4.3. So I get to plug in 4.3 degrees Celsius right there. These three numbers just all need to be multiplied together. And it's going to give you a fairly large number. Okay, 26, I'm sorry, 2,698. And some change, looks like, in 68.68. And since this is energy, we use a capital J for joules. That's how much energy the water actually absorbed. All right? Now, before this video gets insanely long, what we want you to do is follow the same process for your other two cubes of metal, okay, that you put in water. Um, Go through on the same lab sheet or on a separate sheet of paper if you need more room and do the same, uh, the same math. You'll figure out how much the temperature of the water changed by doing the final temperature minus the initial. Should be relatively small for all of your numbers. And then figure out how much the temperature of the metal changed by, by doing the same thing. Okay, Should be a slightly larger number, but you're going to be doing this for brass now if you've already done it for copper. All right? And then you'll plug that, those numbers into this equation down here. The lab tells you that the M for part C is the mass of the water, specific heat of water, and then the temperature change of the water, which you calculated right here. Okay? This number right here and the specific heat of the metal is for part D. I'm going to do that in a different video because this one's already getting too long. Okay? See if you can replic replicate the same process for all of your cubes of metal and for all of your water. Good luck.